you guys and welcome back to Kids Church with Kayla from my living room to yours. And we are still in our series game plan. So today we are going to be talking about God's game plan for our nation and the role that we play in that. But first we've got an awesome video. So let's go check in with Todd. How you doing, buddy? Sorry, I was late. You ready to get into the day's training? It's about time you showed up. Hey, 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 sorry. I said I was sorry. I was teaching a Yorkshire Terrier how to cook a grilled ham and cheese. Well, sorry isn't good enough. You really expect me to believe that you were teaching a dog to cook grilled ham and cheese? How is a dog supposed to do that? They can't get cheese. A dog doesn't have any money. Okay, shortstop. Enough of all of that. It's time to get into the day's training. I don't think I need to learn from you. I've got skills. Now listen, Todd, you're acting a little bit prideful, don't you think? What do you mean? Well, it sounds to me like there's not a lot of humility there. You think you're all that in a bag of chips. Let me ask you this. Did you think to pray to God before your tryouts the other day? Well, no. Well, it sounds to me like basketball skills are the things you need to learn today. You need to be learning the same lesson that the kids are learning. What's that? How to humble yourself and pray. I promise you, there's a lot you can learn if you just listen up. Okay, I will. I promise. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Promise. It's all about a promise that God will keep as long as we humble ourselves and pray. And it's not just a promise for us, it's a promise for the whole country. Wow. That's right. If we want God's game plan for our country, we got to humble ourselves, pray, and turn from our wicked ways. Now in the meantime, let's work on some dribbling, okay? Now the first thing you gotta do with dribbling is you gotta get a lot of spit going in your mouth. All right, you guys, now it is time for our Bible lesson. And today's Bible lesson is about the prideful banquet. It's a shorter story in the Bible and it's found in Luke chapter 14, verses seven through 11. Jesus was at this banquet of one of the Pharisees. Now a banquet, if you guys don't know, is like a big supper for lots of people. So they're kind of having like a dinner party, right? A big dinner. And the Pharisees were the important church leaders of the day, all right? So Jesus is at this banquet with all these Pharisees and he's noticing how they're all acting. They were all trying to take one of the best seats at the table, all sitting saying, I should be in that seat. And Jesus starts to talk to them and he says, hey, don't take the most important seat thinking that you're the most important person there because the host might have somebody more honorable plan to sit in that seat. And then the host would have to come to you and say, hey, you need to move down to one of the lower seats because this person's supposed to sit there. And then you'd be embarrassed because you would have to sit in the lowest spot. He said, instead, this is how you should act. When you come into the banquet hall, take the lowest seat, sit there. And then the host would come ask you up to one of the more honorable spots. And then you would have glory and honor in the eyes of everybody else there at the table. And that story ends off with this verse in verse 11. It says, whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And we're gonna be learning about that in our lesson today. But first, let's check in with our power verse in Artiste. My name is Rachel Teese, but nobody goes by Rachel anymore, so you can just call me R. R. Teese. Now, I've just been working on my newest painting, but my hands are getting so tired, I need a break. So, why don't you help me with today's power verse? See, the problem is I sleepwalk at night. And last night, I was painting today's power verse, and I started using pictures instead of words. So I need your help to help me figure out what it's supposed to say. Let's take a look at it. Then if my, hmm, what is that? Door, door with a hole in it. Boys and girls, what could that word be? Oh, you know, maybe it's a peep hole. Oh, <gasps> people, people is the word. Great job, everyone. Who are telephone, no, dialing a phone number. Oh, yes, that's it, called by my name. Will, hmm, um, 
Singing? What could that be? Oh yes, hum. Hum ball. Oh yes, hum ball. Themselves and hands. No, that can't be it. Ah oh, yes, pray. And seek my smile. No, that can't be it. Happy. What could that be? Ah oh, yes, face. And turn from there. Purple angry man. No, that's not it. Ah, oh, wicked. Ways, I will ear. No, sound. Boys and girls, what could that word be? Oh, yes, hear from heaven and will, hmm, for present gift. Ah, oh, yes, that is it, forgive their sins and restore their land. Second Chronicles 7.14 That's it! Great job boys and girls! Now let's make sure that we don't forget it. So everyone stand up and say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three! Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. 2 Chronicles 7.14 Great job everyone, you can all have a seat. Now would you like to see what I've been painting today? It's absolutely marvellous. It's a unicorn riding a bicycle in the sky. You know I had a dream about this once and I've wanted to paint it ever since. I think I'm going to hang it in my bathroom. Well, thank you so much again for all of your help today. I'll see you later, boys and girls. Bye-bye. Hey, you guys. Now it is time for our lesson, and we're learning about God's game plan for our nation. Do you guys love our nation? I sure do. We have got great freedoms. We have freedom to learn about Jesus and have church together and worship. I've got freedom to make these videos and teach you guys. Isn't that great? But... The reality is our world is still sinful and we need, just need Jesus love and forgiveness and healing on our nation too. We want God's game plan for our nation and we can figure out what our role to play in that is. But before we get into that, I've got something pretty cool to show you guys. Check it out. It's a medal. It's bright and it's blue for the best or first place, right? It's got a gold thing at the end. I got it for myself because I'm practically perfect. I am a great teacher. Everybody loves to be my friend. I'm serving God. I'm sure he's proud. I was a practically perfect kid. I got great grades. I'm really kind to everybody too. But guess what? Everyone wants to be my friend. So that's why I got myself this medal. Now, I'm sure you guys are all thinking, Wow, Kayla, that was pretty prideful. My goodness, were you going to stop talking, right? Maybe you know somebody that acts like that sometimes. Well, our power verse today says, When my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and restore their land. That was 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. That was our power verse. And we're going to be talking about that because that verse is important for our nation as well as it is for us. There are some things that we can do to help God's game plan for our nation. And the first thing is humble ourselves, right? So me buying myself a medal because I'm just a fantastic person isn't very necessary, right? But what does humbling mean? It means lower in importance, right? Not proud or arrogant like I was with my shiny new medal. Placing somebody else in higher authority, right? But how do we do that, right? Because we should do that with God. We should lower ourselves and exalt God, right? God should be our number one. 
So when you pray, I have a question. Do you ask God for a bunch of things? Let's see, Lord, Lord, please, 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 for Christmas, can I get a pony, right? Or maybe it's important stuff too. We just asking God for this or that. Like, Lord, I just pray my sister will stop annoying me, right? There might be some of that. But I have a question. Do you guys ever take time to ask God what he wants and pray, Lord, your will be done, right? Because sometimes God's got a different plan than ours because we don't have the answers for everything, but God does. The next thing after humbling ourselves is we must pray, right? So we need to humble ourselves when we pray, but it's important for us to pray. So I have a question. Do you guys have daily time that you pray or you talk with God? Because you guys should talk to God every single day. But, you know, like, why should we pray? Does it really work? Well, I've got a question. Imagine I met somebody amazing, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we should become best friends, right? But then I never hung out with them. I never asked them to go do something or talk to them, gave them a phone call, right? But I really wanted to become best friends with them, but I just never did any of that. Would I become best friends with that person? No, you need to spend time with them and talk with them, right? That's how you get to know somebody. And that is how we get to know God, is by praying and talking with God, right? You can still surrender and give your request, be like, Lord, I would love a pony for Christmas, but maybe, maybe there's something else or praying and asking God, maybe how can I help my sister, right? Instead of, you know, like, Lord, please make her not as annoying, but also asking, hey, God, what's your plan, right? We need to make praying a priority, but also reading our Bible because that's how we get to know God. Because the next thing is we must seek God's face. So what do you do if you want to learn something or become better at something like a sport? Say you want to become really good at basketball. Who do you ask? More than likely, you're going to ask a basketball coach, right? Now imagine if you want to become better at math. What do you do? Maybe some of you guys do this, right? You talk to your math teacher. You're like, hey, I need some help. I need to get better at this, right? Now I've got this Lego set here. Pretty big Lego set. Now imagine I wanted to build this right here, this pretty pink little house. Um, Do you think it would work if I just started pulling random pieces out? You know, like closing my eyes and pulling some random pieces out or like, eh, this looks good. And do you think I'd create exactly what that looks like? No, but I've got this handy dandy manual here and that would teach me how to build that pink house that I wanna build, right? Well, guess what? We've got a manual too, because God gave us his instruction manual. Life, we don't always have the answers, but God does. And so we read our Bible for guidance. We pray and we listen and we practice what it says. That's what's important about us. We need to practice what it says too. But the Bible is our instruction manual. and We must seek his face. Now, the last thing is I must run from sin. Sin has corrupted this world, right? But guess what? It doesn't have to corrupt you. Don't fall into the trap. But what does the price for sin? Do you guys remember? We were talking about the price of sin. It's death. Yikes. Well, Amos 5 verse 14 says, do what is good and run from evil so that you may live, right? So do you think when Amos says run from evil, He's saying, yeah, you know, take your time, but just, you know, move out of there. You know, like, I don't know, for me, if I say, hey, I'm going for a run, more than likely, it's probably going to be a a slow jog slash walk. But I don't think that's what Amos is saying here. He's saying, run, get out of there. I used to be a sprinter. That's about the only time you could get me to actually run. And that's when you, you sprint out of there, right? You run from it. So let's recap. If we want to see God and hear from heaven and for God to restore our nation, we get to play our part. One, by humbling ourselves, right? And two, praying to God. Three, seeking God's face, the Bible, right? Read the Bible. 
and four, running from sin. Not just, you know, daily dallying, you know, run from sin. So I want you guys to practice that this week. Humbling yourselves, praying to God, asking him what his will is, seeking God's face by reading the Bible and running from sin and temptation. All right, now let's close with prayer, okay? Heavenly Father, I just thank you for all these kids and families. Lord, I'm excited for when we get to meet together. But Lord, I thank you that we can um, meet together through video and that our nation has the freedom so that we can do that. Lord, I just pray that you'll be with us this week. I ask that you give us the strength to humble ourselves and what that should look like. Lord, I ask that we will seek your will in our lives and that we will seek your face by reading the Bible and doing what it says, putting that into practice, and that we will have the strength and courage to run and flee from sin. So Lord, I just pray for a blessing on each of the kids this week. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, stay tuned because next up we have questions for Kayla to end out our lesson. Okay, I'm back and now it is time for questions for Kayla. So I have two would you rather questions that I'm asked. And the first one is, would I rather be able to fly or be invisible? You know, I think when I was younger, I probably would have picked to be invisible because I like to sneak around. I like to pretend I was a spy. So being invisible would have been super handy. But I think now I would much rather choose to fly because the birds look so free and I would love to be able to see all sorts of amazing things, especially from the heights. I just have to get over my fear of heights, I guess. But I, I think I would probably rather be able to fly. And the second question is, would I rather be a master at painting or an amazing dancer? I like dancing, I really do, but painting is like super calming for me and I, I love painting. I'm just not super great at it. So I think, I think I'd have to go with being a master painter, kind of like artiste, right? I would, I think I'd rather be a master painter than an amazing dancer. Although dancing is pretty cool. All right, well, thanks for joining me for questions for Kayla. I will see you guys next week. Have a great week.